Undercovered, because some stories just need to be told. Others told more. A few told more fully, or perhaps in a different way, if not in another light. Welcome to conversation about some of the stuff that's just undercovered. This is Undercovered the Podcast with Ben Kimpo. Archbishop, much has been made of a recently begun process. Pope Francis is inviting the entire church to reflect on a theme that is decisive for its life and mission. And I quote, It is precisely this path of synodality which God expects of the church of the third millennium. Now, synodality, according to the Vatican's Secretariat of the Synod, and I quote, refers to the involvement and participation of the whole people of God in the life and mission of the church. Archbishop, please tell us about synodality in the context of the Catholic Church in the Philippines. Ano po ba ito and how do we walk further down this path of synodality? I would, I would begin by saying, this is not new. Uh, uh, the, the Vatican also, in these recent days, has described the synod, not, not synodality, but the synod, and of course implying the spirit of synodality as ancient in its origin, ancient, but new, modern in its configuration, in its institution. What, what do you mean by that now? This way of bishops gathering with the Holy Father, around the Holy Father, uh, convened by the Holy Father, has been done in very ancient times. It is a constant feature of the church, in a way, constant. But when we say it is modern, it was from the experience of something very synodal, which is the Second Vatican Council, 1962 to 1965. In 1965, Pope Paul VI established the Synod of Bishops. Uh, that is why it's modern. This current shape, talaga being, current shape is modern. So, ancient in its inspiration, uh, in its tradition, very ancient. And modern, this one now is modern in its configuration. Uh-huh. Now, Bing, if, 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 if it is an assembly, it is a meeting, it's a conference, why not call it that way? That ancient name carries with it a, a new nuance that is very important, which you could not get in the word assembly or in a word meeting. Talagang beautiful yan. That's why they keep the word senior bishops. Uh, I think you know this being, it comes from two English eyes na, but two Greek words. Sin, the, the, the sin is a Greek word meaning together, united, kasama, uh, kasama, j- j- uh, together. That's why we have synchronized swimming sin. Uh, you synchronize your watches, sin. Or synthesis. Uh, very easy na. So, yung, yung word the sin is together. Uh, uh, kasama. But, sin, odo, odo, silent H, sa Greek, hodos, silent H, odos, uh, being, uh, sakar, sakar, my odometer. Di ba? Odometer. The measurement of the travel, how many kilometers na ang odometer ang travel. So, si Unod, ah, si Unod, two key concepts, together and travel. So, when a synod is called, it is together, we travel together. And that is important for the church. Diba, we always say, we are a pilgrim church. We are a journeying church. And there's no synod of bishops, true synod, in the understanding of the church without the Holy Father. 
it is there he's the vicar of christ the shepherd of the universal church the bishops are there uh, together with the successor peter so that they will be in one mind and one heart as the church travels through history towards the fulfillment of the kingdom so that, that is why synodality is in the very essence of the church being huh? it, it is his and yet the genes yeah. so she becomes a weak church pag hindi siya synodality ang style okay <laughs> even uh, that, that's an example the the eucharist is in a sense can be described as very synodal Jesus eating with us since 1967, okay, the bishops will gather with the Holy Father in a synodal mode to discuss something like family life, okay, or new evangelization. But the style of sharing on new evangelization is synodal, sharing, listening. On youth, the very recent one, on youth. Now, this one being, this one called uh, the 16th uh, 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 Ordinary Assembly of the Synod of Bishops, is a synod on synod, meaning it's a synodal way of reflecting on what is synod. The process itself is the topic. A very reflective a synod on the synod itself because that is essential and then that's the way how the church walks we walk together huh? one mind and one heart acts of the apostles diba? so yeah. in, in okay. a sense are you are you now, saying archbishop that this is a moment of introspection we're now looking at ourselves and the way we do things. Yes, exactly, exactly, exactly. So, and that is very essential because there's no other way of doing it. Adiba uh, being, uh, you can, you can, Jesus walked with his disciples. Ah, sin or us. Uh, his disciples followed him. They were together, no? So, Synod and synodality is is in the genes of the church. If we stop doing it, and then parang sa sibuano maluya kita, we are weakened, no? Hindi tayo vigorous church. Okay, now, you said, tell us about synodality in the context of the Catholic Church in the Philippines. Ano po ito? And how do we walk further down this path? You know, being... In my, in my last uh, address to the CBCP and touching on this coming synod because we knew it was coming, I said, Bing, uh, that, that in the Philippines, not, not to brag about it, not to be too proud about it, the whole way of doing uh, uh, in a synodal way, we have been doing it. The Second Plenary Council of the Philippines, uh, just to give an example, huh? well-chosen delegates from all sectors of society in the Philippines. That was in 1991, I can give you an example, followed in 2001, there was a national uh, uh, consultation, no? a pastoral consultation on church renewal, NPCCR, to reflect on the PCP2. Again, it was very synodal. We had been having diocesan synods in many dioceses in the Philippines. So, it, it, it is not very foreign to us. God bless us in the Philippines. Mayroon ng engagement and leadership to many, with many sectors of our church people. But with this recent, this coming synod and the recent uh, beginning of the pre-synodal consultations. What is so important? The Holy See 
has given us ample, very wise, very practical notes on how to improve the quality, the quality of our synodal activities in the Philippines. If, if I get it right, in a sense, no, we've been doing, we're, we're familiar here in the Philippines, we're familiar with the shape and form because we practice it. We've been doing this, pero yeah. ang improvement that we can get from the from the notes and from the advice of the Vatican is how to give it even more substance, so that the journey yeah, the, the journey together yeah. is really more substantive. Not only at this time, but make it a way of life. Ah, so, talagang improve na ang ating sitting down or gathering ang ating sin ah, so that that will be a way of life in a journey. Yeah. Beautiful. Journeying together. All right. This is Undercovered the Podcast with Ben Kimpo. When you're journeying together, to me, the implication is there are differences or that there are separated differences. From your perspective as CBCP president over the last few years, what are some of the things which tayo as Filipino Catholics must accept are differences amongst us which we must bring to the fore and, and discuss? Uh, I was reflecting on this item. I would I would proceed this way: that there are uh, differences uh, uh, among us in a way that is very positive. Differences in a way of being a people with variety of gifts. So separate, different in terms of giftedness. So, in other words, it is a kind of a set of differences or marks of differences or being very distinct, which is very positive. We should maintain. Huh? For example, one example I can give, the, the Lumads, the IPs, are different. But we don't want them to be, don't erase that difference. The, keep that because by keeping that difference or being very another, we become enriched. In other words, first instance I will answer, don't be afraid of variety. Don't be afraid of differences. No? Cultures, no? we are enriched. We are kind of, I, I have often used it, uh, Filipino society, uh, we are gifted, salamat sa Dios with a tapestry with different reds, colors, and richness. So that's one. That's one. I was in another, another diocese, young bishop na ko, and then this archbishop told me that, uh, from where are you, uh, Valles? Uh, Davao ako, archbishop, but I'm really pure bola, no? So, ah! When I think, when we think, we think of mga Bisayas, taga Bohol, taga Cebu, we think of music. Talaga, you are seen as a, uh, you, you, you sing, you, you have music in your blood. I said, wow, it was said in such a way that you are different. Huh? You, you, you stand out with that gift. But we become richer as Filipinos yes. with that gift. I'll go back to the eyepiece. Uh, you, okay, uh, you're giving me time. Oh, if you come uh, come to know the IPs, they have such a nose, a smell, a touch of nature that we have lost. So to be close to the IPs uh, and allowing them to be IPs without, you know, your attitude the mga, mga lumad, mga IPs, but if you truly respect them and allow them to be IPs, oh, we will learn 
how to deal with nature. Okay, so differences, uh, mga distinct characters, uh, lahi, 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 makaiba, but very positive. But as you ask, also there are differences which must be bridged. Uh -huh. Differences which are unwanted. Poverty, access to education, huh? access to health care, uh, uh, differences in mga attitudes, uh, attitudes na more unaccepting, mga biases. Uh, so, yan ang to deal with. No? Uh, differences which are negative, which should not be there, and we try to, for example, uh, uh, Inter-religious dialogue uh, uh, Differences which have created Conflict and tension That should not be there Oh, it would be nice to see Muslims practicing truly as Muslims Side by side With, uh, with uh, Christian faith So, my welcome Natural variety Differences But there are Differences which must be bridged. And synodality would help us greatly. That's a fantastic ah. way of looking at it. No, we, we, we tend to we tend to see differences as things that should be bridged, but really yes. but yes. not all. Yes. There are there are differences, there are gaps that must oh. be bridged, but there are differences yes. that must be allowed to flourish oh. on their own because they are what give us variety. And these are things which allow us to be exactly. richer. The, the church, since the beginning, uh, became journeyed. There's a Peter, fisherman. There's a tax collector, Matthew. There's a sophisticated Saint Paul, a well-educated Jew. Uh, there's a Peter, a raw fisherman. So, but we journey together. This is Undercovered the Podcast with Ben Kimpo. The preparatory document of the Synod makes mention of COVID, the pandemic, as having, and I quote, momentarily revived the sense that we are a global community, all in the same boat, where one's person's problems are the problems of all. So it goes, once more, we realize that no one is saved alone. We can only be saved together. At, yet at the same time, the pandemic has also made the already existing inequalities and iniquities explode. Humanity seems increasingly shaken by processes of massification and fragmentation. Parang napakalalim nun, Archbishop. What are your thoughts on this as these relate to the Philippines? What is described there uh, cannot be very far from the actual situation of the Philippines, which is also, by and large, the situation of many, most parts of the world. No? And not seen well long because they have material resources, but the pandemic has really uh, uh, shown us that situation where one whole community, one whole family. Now, in the context of the Philippines, uh, related to the call of this coming synod, no? o number one guidance in the preparatory document, the one that you read is in the preparatory document, telling us, as you approach the synod, and of course, here's, here in the Philippines, in the context of what you said, a COVID-19 pandemic, the number one para item to keep in mind is that the call to journey together. The journey in companions. One thing, uh, it, 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 it is a journey of everyone. It says here, 
further explanation, in the church and in society, as journeying together, we are side by side on the same road. We cannot claim that we have other roads. Actually, humanity has one road. Keep that in mind. And then, in your local church, we are asked, in your local church, in Davao, in Cebu, in Manila, in uh, Tuigarao, no? in your local church, who are the ones journeying together? Sa pandemic, there are those who can't even afford some fare for the tricycle. Those who are not, uh, who don't have Wi-Fi for, for online masses, because their concern is food for lunch. Huh? So, they're, they're, the, you can multiply that. So, who are the ones journeying together? Those whom do you consider as part of this journey? For example, who would like to sit down as bishop and listen to somebody who would say meekly, not, not insulting, but perhaps being meekly, Sir, Monsignor, oh, sa, sa totoo lang, we have not felt your presence. You're asking us to journey together. In all honesty, malay malayo ang simbahan. Who would like to listen to that? Come to think of it. Not, not insulting, but you allow them to speak out. No? You know, Bing, uh, allow me to continue. Uh, when we say our church, who is part of it? Who is asking us to journey together? Now, Bing, who is asking us? I must admit, at one time, when I was young, I know there's an expression saying this, cocky sure. But when you grow old, sabi saya, pakisa makabalis, do a subtle journey. Wala. Through the years, if by yourself, your own person, you are weak. But you are sent. You are sent. The one who is asking us to journey together is a greater person. The greatest, in fact. But if we cannot inspire our people to look up to that calling us, parang calling the baton, the voice, keep going, then the journey is extremely difficult. Now, who are the road companions, including those outside the ecclesial perimeter? Including those outside the ecclesial parameter. What persons or groups are left on the margins expressly or in fact? Uh, this is uh, triggered by your question of pandemic. B b very nice and pandemic in a sense, uh, in a sense, because as you said, it has made us force us to see that we are one global community. You know, I will close this being by personal experience. Nag lockdown sa bahay. Kami, lockdown bahay. Huh? Pero, honestly, three full meals a day, said Bishop and my companions. But in the middle of this 14-day lockdown, kami, dito, it came to me, ako may three meals a day, but sigurado ako sa Davao, pag may mga families na mag-lockdown ang barangay, that they would think of lunch and dinner with great anxiety. So, sinong kasama ko sa journey? And that is, that is the grace of this pandemic to think sino ang kalakbay natin sa lakbay sa buhay.
This is Undercover the podcast with Ben Kimpo. Archbishop, the diocesan synod, uh, synodal process has just started. What do you want yeah, to yeah, see yeah. from each of our local, the Philippine churches, the Philippine dioceses, the, the Philippine parishes? What do you want to see from each of us now? How can we make sure that the different, the marginalized, the less heard, those who are anxious about the next meals, how can we be sure that you know all of these different uh, groups are heard? This coming synod has caught our attention because instead of the regular every three years, the Holy Father uh, made the preparatory period longer, 20, starting 2021, and then the actual assembly of bishops or the seat of bishops would be in October of 2023. Sa Philippines, up to February 11, that is for the diocesan consultations. Yan ang laro, yan ang activity. Now, from February 11 to April, is the national Philipp, national consultation from October 17? Uh, sa ang activity would be in the archdiocese and diocese, mga parokya sectors, etc. And then you produce a report of that and submit that to the CBCP on February 11. February 11. All the results will be collated, ready for a national activity of consultation, which would be, this would be on March 7, 8, and 9. National, probably Manila, by Zoom, I don't know yet. And then after that, ang result ng uh, assembly consultation on March 7, 8, and 9, then a few weeks by April, uh, April of next year, Submit na sa Roma ang, ang results. So, with this being, we are given two important documents, sources. One you mentioned already, the preparatory document, I call shortcut PD, and the VD, body mecum. In this guide, beautifully made, uh, we are given a beaut- very good practical uh, uh, directions on how to do the consultations. Very so, your question, uh, young marginalized are heard, the different uh, are, are heard, uh, it is for the bishop especially to see to it that the mechanism is established down below. But so make no mistake, it is very clear, you are correct in your question, that the church, as I said earlier, Kasama is a journey, those who are in the perimeter, those who are not only in the perimeter, but about to be left in the journey, make sure that you reach out to them. Uh, so, uh, example big, concrete, Davao, 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 ito na. Some prep namin, to do this, uh, nagawa kami ng, uh, nagawa kami ng the actual uh, sitting down consultation na sa mga communities, mga BECs o JKK sa Mindanao, standard, no? yun lang. Isang pare nag-raise ang hand siya. Archbishop, uh, we're planning here in the parish to consult groups which are not, we are not sure, katoliko sila. Parang walang, walang religious mark sila. How about consulting our non-Catholic friends? Pas- I was not totally shocked, pero tama pala. Tama. So, so, that's an example of what you said. Uh, my guide sa Vatican, but also we are given a leeway to be creative. Uh, creative and to, to be in touch with realities and then you react pastorally to make sure that there is synodality. 
and also being uh, the Vatican also has uh, expressed it said now that it is not a consultation that very interested in reports but very interested in the in the process in the impact itself and then it said it is not just an event but also a process so therefore we, without diminishing the importance of that final synthesis report we are also giving uh, importance to the whole flavor itself that when the report is sent the way I would describe it being is that the, when the report is sent Sana I pray to the Lord that we, we feel that now we are connected to the church so not only an event in Rome a final consultation but a process of being church on the ground This is Undercovered, the podcast with Ben Kimpo. Much of local diocesan work will take place in the same year, next year, that we are observing belatedly 500 years of Christianity. Of course, diba, the church decided to move uh, late a bit itong celebration ng 500 years of Christianity in the country. A uh, celebration whose theme is gifted to give. And... That really is aligned with the preparatory document of the Synod when it stresses that our journey together is in fact what most effectively enacts and manifests the nature of the Church as the pilgrim and missionary people of God. In a sense, tahe, and, and it, it, it ties in quite nicely and, and quite fittingly. Any thoughts on this, Archbishop? Thank you. That's, uh, that's nice that you have uh, caught, uh, brought back into the, the whole scenario, our current, still current uh, commemoration of the 500th year of Christianity or 500 years of Christianity in the country. Uh, the culmination, by the way, is still is coming in the month of April next year, uh, ang, ang ending of this great jubilee year. Now, with that as a background, since the beginning, no, we were introduced to the faith, maybe it is in the character of the Filipinos being that that, that uh, faith is very communitarian. That faith is in the, in the family. Yan ang sa barangay sa katilingban, ha? sa sambayanan. So it is, uh, salamat sa Diyos, very Filipino. Ha? So I, I would say that giftedness of faith has been, yes, a personal commitment, an individual yes to the Lord, very true. But quickly at the same time, it is very communitarian. It's very church. It's that faith is not my journey alone, but my journey with my tatay, my nanay, with my clan, with my community. This synod would greatly complement in, in strengthening, in nourishing the Filipino faith. Huh? I would say this is grace. Hmm? We will be Faith will be strengthened by being a faith lived in a synodal church. It will be a meaningful faith. And not only that, if that faith is nourished, it becomes very healthy. It grows within the journeying together. Then we would also see that like of old, 500 years ago, we would fully realize that we cannot keep this faith to ourselves. It must be constantly offered 
as an inspiration to those kasama sa journey, a sense of mission, gifted to give. It becomes such a treasure, according to Karnatagli recently, he said, if you keep that faith, you don't use it as a gift to others in the journey, kasama sa lakbay, it will become stale. Huh? It, will not remain, it will not remain alive. This is Undercovered the Podcast with Ben Kimpo. Archbishop, basing na kay message lang sa mga katawan to, to end lang. I think it will be one of the last that I, I'll be airing this way uh, as president of the CBCP. But I like to thank you for this opportunity because self-confession, I'm not much of a public speaker. No? I'm 70 years old, but that's not one of my gifts. But salamat sa Dios. Uh, being, huh? Salamat because I know I have something inside, but I'm I'm forced in a healthy way to articulate things, to share things which are part of my life. And whether you agree or not, this is only done in the spirit of the synod. That I'm I'm surfacing things to share with you, and hopefully, hopefully you can see things. That would help you in your faith to see your giftedness in the midst of the pandemic, yes. But nevertheless, it is a gift, it is a light, it is a power which is not yours, but the source is greater and most wonderful. And we can be sure that that gift that we treasure and consider as really giftedness to us, we are also confident to day in and day out, recognized or not, continue to share that along the way because together we are in this journey to the kingdom of God. Maraming salamat po. This is Undercovered the Podcast with Ben Kimpo.